Hello and welcome to the Borough Breakdown podcast, another lowdown show, and this time it's on Morgan Rogers. And Middlesbrough announced the signing of Morgan on Friday on a four-year deal. Uh, the 20-year-olds came from Manchester City and adds to Borough's attacking threat just because we're signing so many players who can play multiple multiple positions, and it's very, very exciting. Dana, five out of the six. Um, we'll come to the goalkeepers shortly, but what are your initial thoughts on, on, Morgan, on Morgan Rogers coming to Borough? Yeah, I quite like it, you know, because I remember when he was at Lincoln a couple of seasons ago and I watched the playoff games against Sunderland, hoping so dearly that I'd see a Sunderland fan crying at the end of it. I don't think we did in the end, but they were still disappointed nonetheless, so I'll take that. And he was part of that really good front three between himself, Brennan Johnson and Anthony Scully. And I think the thing with Morgan Rogers, unlike with Sammy Silvera, he's a little bit bulkier. I did Google his height earlier and it said six foot four which is just absolutely not the case i think he's Never six, absolutely not no six foot one i think he is so he's just uh, silver is about five foot eight so in terms of stature morgan rogers is probably the type of winger that can carry the ball and fend off defenders with his strength rather than you know sammy silver is probably more with his pace but uh, morgan rogers is still quite quick and I wouldn't say he's electric, but he's decently quick. He would fit quite nicely into Borough's counter-attacking style. Uh, described on the City website as a dynamic winger, capable of playing in all uh, in three positions across the, the front line. But he has spent the majority of his career so far playing on the left wing. He's creative, got a good eye for a pass and just a very good player in being able to drive with the ball and also... Sometimes when you see players play with, with their pace and they're running with the ball at speed, their decision-making can be a little bit lacking at the end of it. Listen, it's very important to note that Morgan Rogers is 20, which is crazy because he played so well at Lincoln. I thought he was maybe a little bit older, maybe 22 or 23, but 20 years old. He is not the finished article and he, he won't be for, for quite a while. So he's still got a, a fantastic amount of ability for such a young player and, and that fearlessness in being able to play fun football. And it seems to be one of the things that we're seeing from these Borough signings that they're fearless in attack and Morgan Rogers definitely fits into that. Um, he contributes decently defensively uh, as well in terms of the statistics. He's in the top 1% for, for forwards, for tackles per 90 last season, the top 8% for interceptions per 90 uh, uh, as well. So I'm pretty happy with this one. It just gives us an extra option in attack in positions that I think we need that technical ability and we've got players that can beat their man, They've got pace, big tick on the counter attack side there. So, yeah, I'm I'm really quite intrigued by generally Borough's direction this summer, and Morgan Rogers fits into the blueprint that I think we're seeing from our recruitment team. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, there can be an argument to say there's no experience coming in yet. There will be. There, I think there definitely will be three or four, even maybe five signings probably yet to come uh, from Borough this summer. And, you know, when I was looking at uh, Morgan Rogers, when we looked at him on Y Scout, you know, when we look at him on Y Scout, we look at the all the goods, like the the all the bads. We look at all the individual stats that someone can bring to it a game. And we are really getting a good, well-rounded view of this player. And I think Morgan Rogers, although he's got really good league experience, I think he's a player that is still, like you were saying there, very raw. We need to mm. probably be patient with these young players that are coming in but also the confidence thing is going to be such a, an issue not an issue but something we have to be very mindful of I think when these old players come in you know when you when you're young your confidence is very brittle and you know it can be a bad performance here or there and you know if fans get on your back it can be quite a difficult place uh, for you to play football but for me from we've seen from from the the clips that we've seen from him on, on bias scout and obviously going in from loads of different type of uh, player that we've watched that I liked his directness I liked his ability to get the ball turned over and his, his pressing was really really good I think he was unfortunate at Blackpool um, just due to managerial changes which didn't really fit his style but also I think it would give him a, a good learning of how to play in a different way but I think everything that how we play how Man City play and how he's being brought up into playing this particular way I think it aligns quite well there is definitely some similarities and patterns of play 
Um, so I feel like he'll probably pick it up quite quickly. But for me, I, I agree. I think every sign that we've made probably this week has been exciting to some extent, not just because the, the young players with, with potential, but it's a good direction for us to go at. But also it's like a kind of a base that we've already got a good base. We're adding some youth to that base. And then also we're adding more experience to that base. So I feel like we're getting to a really good place uh, just from bringing these young players in. And obviously the, the dynamic nature of what Bora are doing in terms of bringing in wingers, but they're bringing in wingers that do different things. So like we've seen in games last season, probably Coventry is a prime example where we became a bit one-dimensional. Having these ability and having the players like this is going to give us just a different dimension, something different to think about. And also having young players come on who are rapids, like, like the players that we just brought in, aren't going to be the best for the fullbacks the 75th minute onwards. So mm. it's all really positive. Um, but like can you I, mentioned, there, go, on, go on. Can I just say very quickly, you mentioned there about, you know, we are bringing in a lot of youngsters. I don't think people should get so bogged down in that as if they can't make an impact mm. in the present. I think it's good that we've got players like Rogers, who's had experience in the championship before, although obviously not a, a huge amount of it. But Rogers. Silvera, Gilbert, they are young players, but they can make an impact as well. So I think I think it's good with that we've got the potential, but it's not just potential for the future. I think it can also be that they can make an impact in the present as well. Yeah, and look, it doesn't matter how old you are. If you're good enough, you're good enough. Like I think Jude Belling was a fine example when he was 16 year old mm. and danced past five Borough defenders. Oh, God, don't, and don't remind was me excellent of that. against us. What do you want me? <laughs> like a player who could be 16 and really thrive at the championship. There's just it's it's just when you're ready. I think you know Delhi Ali blew up this, like for what I'm at like 17, at 16, 17 at MK Dons. There's like so there's quite a few players that can do very similar things. Vandenberg. 16-year-old when he came into the first team and is starting mm-hmm. to be really advanced at 18. So when, if you're good enough, you're good enough. Um, but I think we need to get a different perspective, to be honest, because, you know, he was at Lincoln um, in 2021. And, you know, yes, they did it end in a playoff defeat. But we did speak uh, to an Imps fan uh, in Jake Tong uh, just to get a perspective on Rodgers from, from, from a Lincoln perspective. Morgan had quite a good spell, actually, at Lincoln City. He joined in the January that we were pushing for um, automatic promotion to the championship. Uh, He came in and formed a really good front three alongside um, his mate at the time, Brennan Johnson um, and Anthony Scully, who previously played in the the championship with Wigan, played really well, was was really effective and, and dragged us through a lot of games with his attacking output. I remember... A really good goal he scored away at Ipswich, where he took a took a couple of men on and, and stuck it in the top corner. But overall, just a really impressive winger, really quick with his feet, really really quick in general. Was able to beat a fullback quite convincingly. Didn't perform at his best in the playoff final against Blackpool, but that was probably to be, uh, you know, it was his first big game of his career, I suppose. So that was understandable, but. Yeah, it was a really big part of of Lincoln's success that season. I would say that his style of play, like I say, is most effective out wide. So um, I know previously Borough have played with a a back three. Um, I wouldn't suggest he would be a wing back. He'd definitely be someone that you'd look to play wide, um, left or right in in a front three really explosive can can create opportunities there was one game um against mk dons where he got a hat trick of assists for his mate brennan johnson which was good um and uh, uh, in terms of weaknesses he obviously he we didn't have to do a lot of defending um that season but when we did he would sometimes not put the hard yards in also sometimes obviously he's still only young so it was difficult for him to to put a lot of games together he was sometimes often in and out of the squad you know unable to play um back to back um but obviously he's had a couple of loans since then so you'd imagine he'd be able to do that now but yeah I, I don't think there were too many weaknesses obviously he's tested himself at the championship um with Blackpool and Bournemouth so he knows what it takes in that in that division and I think given a permanent home in Middlesbrough I think he'll really thrive so yeah, I think he's a good signing for, for Middlesbrough and I think he'll do really well. So, thank you very much uh, for that, Jake. Um, so, Dana, we said a little bit earlier on around the type of players Borough bringing in. 
you know, play multiple positions, which is only a blessing, I think, for anyone. You know, they'll have like a, a specialty, but the ability to play in multiple positions is fantastic. But where do you think uh, Morgan will fit in? I initially thought right wing because with Silvera, he's got a very good shot on him to be able to cut inside and unleash that shot, I think will be really important just to add a, a little bit of an extra dimension to our game, a little bit of potential uh, unpredictability. But in fairness, when I looked at Morgan Rogers' career so far, 66 games he's played on the left wing, the majority of his, his time has been played out on that left-hand side. 25 times he's played on the right. And interestingly, 14 times he's played as a centre forward as well. So could he maybe be an option centrally? We'll obviously see. But again, it, it taps into this narrative of, of the positional, positional fluidity. So I don't think we should get too into positions and who plays where, because I think we'll probably see Silvera play on the right, Morgan play on the right, Silvera play on the left. And, and Rogers play on the left as well. So I think both of them will, will switch. Um, to be honest, in games last season, we did see um, Agree yeah. and Ramsey switch positions. So I'm going to say he will start out as a right winger, um, just you know, com- competing with Isaiah Jones, but we'll see. Yeah, we will. And, you know, when you were saying there around him playing centre forward, it was at Blackpool last season uh, under was, Mick yeah. McCarthy, uh, where he was he was asked to play in that position. You've looked at the forums as well. Uh, you know, any, you know, forums can be a, a place where you see the best and worst in people. But <laughs> yeah. what was the uh, what was the reaction like from the Blackpool fans? Because just from my initial understanding, this seemed pretty like not upset, but they're like, ah, we didn't get, bring him back. I think it's probably the best yeah. way to, to sit. Yeah, I think there's this general consensus that he's a good player, but they didn't see the best of him because of the mm. way that Blackpool season unraveled and obviously having um, Michael Appleton and then um, Mick McCarthy, it probably doesn't lend itself so much to, more so with Mick McCarthy anyway, Morgan Rogers get seeing the best from him. But yeah, just a couple of things that I picked up from that forum. Someone says that under a better manager, I think he'll flourish. One of the most talented players we've had in Tangerine for a long time, which is interesting. Um, another said, I think we'll see what, he, uh, what we could have had if we had a decent manager, talented lad. Uh, another one said... Uh, Mick McCarthy getting a, f- a little bit of flack there and he catches some strays. But then a- another one says, Rogers continuously got himself into good positions. If he can improve on his finishing, he'd be some player. So with that in mind on the finishing side, Rogers is right-footed. If we play him on the left, I think just from what I've watched of him at Lincoln, he'll cut inside and he'll do his thing. He'll either shoot or try to bring somebody in with a nice little reverse ball or try to get the ball through in behind I just feel like Silvera's shooting is just a little bit better and his threat from um, goal scoring situations out wide is just a little bit better so that's why I think going back to your question about where Rogers will fit in I think Silvera on the left Rogers on the right so watch it be the other way around yeah, but it, it it will yeah, it probably will be the other way around like you mentioned <laughs> it. but like but to be honest that you were saying there around like in game rotation like look we'll probably see in games where if we have a front a front three or the front four that we've been uh, utilizing for, for the majority of the season, like having that confidence and ability to rotate, but also for like key moments in games, like the game now is is changing. That you'll see that there's there's much more phases than there ever has been, where a, a team will you know press for like maybe like ten to fifteen minutes, and then there'll be another phase for like five minutes, and there'll be another phase, and there'll be another phase, and having that rotation on the pitch is going to be quite interesting to see us. Uh, see us um, adapt to that but we, we went to the forums so I feel like we need to go to a fan um, who we can who we can talk to about uh, Morgan Rogers coming in and we actually did speak to Tom from Up the Mighty Pools pod uh, just to get his view because you know we want to know the goods the in, the good the ins the outs the ups the downs we heard from Lincoln we want to hear from Blackpool now but here's Tom from Up the Mighty Pools just to find out a little bit a li- just a little bit more on Morgan Rogers a few thoughts on Morgan Rogers then from a Blackpool perspective. So we eventually got him on loan in January, so we've been in for him for probably 18 months. Uh, we initially were in for him in January under Neil Critchley. Uh, it's a real shame that we didn't get to see him in that 
successful side that finished uh, 16th in the championship. I think he would have fit in well. But when he eventually did come after his injury in the summer and then we finally got him in, in uh, January under Michael Appleton, which suddenly turned into Mick McCarthy, which I'm sure wasn't what he was expecting to come into. A relegation dogfight. It really wasn't uh, the place that he probably initially thought he was coming to when he when he joined the club. So, with all that in mind, he did very well for us. He often played up front on his own. He's, he's almost like a, a centre-half in the way he's built. So, to be an attacker with such a presence about him, such strength, he's, he's a real handful. So, he can play anywhere across the front three. Uh, he can play up front, but his, his most natural position is probably on the right wing. He... Gets himself about, you know, but but also very skillful. Tries a few tricks and flicks, which which do tend to come off as well. So I would suggest that he's he's capable of playing higher up the league. In terms of Middlesbrough, though, you're obviously a club that's looking to to get out of the division the opposite way to how we did. So whilst this is a permanent signing, I'm expecting him to be um, in and around the squad, not necessarily making the starting eleven and build his way in. He's only a young lad; he's only 20, so. Hopefully he can get a few games this season, in and out, make a contribution to the side and be capable of playing higher. Uh, I think it'll be a good step for him and it is a, it is a decent move for him really. He maybe might have expected to be in a mid-table side so yeah, he's probably got a decent move given his career to date but it's good to see him sort of earn that move as well after trying his heart out. I think one final point to mention is the... The effort that he put in in those final games, he was a standout player in terms of quality and commitment. A lot of players possibly went into hiding and, and were fearful of drawing attention to themselves with their performances, which which led to our relegation. But Rodgers could never be criticised in terms of quality and also the uh, the commitment that he put in. So yeah, a real standout for us and he'd get a good reception if he does play at Bloomfield Road again. So thanks for that, uh, Tom Buchtena. We had some really good feedback from Lincoln. Really good feedback from Blackpool. The almonds are good. And obviously from everything that we've seen as well, there seems to be a lot of positives around that. I'm going to add another layer to that as well. I think managers really do make an impact on players. We've heard really good positive things about Michael Carrick and how he's managing the group already. And obviously the coach and staff with that. It has the, the you know, the, the ingredients to be something good. Uh, but how would you rank this signing out of five? I think I'm going to go with another four. I don't see any reason to downgrade it. Um, I'm happy with the signings that Borough have made so far. And I think that Rogers is just another one that fits into the the blueprint of bringing in these untapped potential type players with a lot of room to grow. So, <clears throat> yeah, another option, another direct winger that can potentially cut inside, another versatile option, quick. So big tick in the box on the counter-attacking style that Borough, um, that we saw from Borough last season. Uh, and also, if we are in possession, I think we've got that player there that can unlock the door with with the tricks and flicks that Tom was talking about and also his pace as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm probably going to go as well with four. You know, I think it's a really, really good sign. It's going to be difficult to make it a five-star, you know, five-star mm. sign. Oh, I'll be interested to see who can really fit the bill. But all the omens from this week have been really, really promising. Um, but, you know, you've heard our thoughts. You've heard Lincoln's thoughts. You've heard Blackpool's thoughts. We want to hear your thoughts as well. So if you're watching us on, on YouTube, leave us in the comments. If you listen to us on your podcast provider, we have a little feedback form in Spotify. So let us know on that. Or alternatively, tweet us as well at Borough underscore Breakdown on Threads. Here we are on that as well. How would have thought it? You know, all the social medias uh, platforms that, that we're on. Uh, but for for right now, though, this has been the Borough Breakdown podcast. And that was all your Morgan Rogers podcast. In a podcast. No, Morgan Rogers chatter in a podcast. <laughs> hey, dear me. About how many signings are we going to make? I'm cracking yeah, off. To be, to be fair. How many signings? How you need a drink, signings? Johnny. I'm going to get a drink after this. But yeah. All of your Morgan uh, Rogers chatter in a pod. <laughs>